AQA A-Level Physics and this is my first video on capacitance. I'm going to do two videos. I'll squeeze all of capacitance into two videos. And this one will be this chunk of the specification. So what is capacitance? Well, imagine we've got a large metal ball and you'll see that I've connected the metal ball to a power supply uh, and well the switch is open at the moment the ball is connected to the positive terminal the negative terminal is connected to earth so what's going to happen when we close the switch if we close the switch what will happen well what will happen will be that the ball will become positively charged now why because the power supply will push charge onto the ball. It will push positive charge onto the ball. So there'll be a current flowing there. Uh, it'll get the charge from Earth, okay? So it'll suck up positive charge from Earth. And this voltage, like a voltage, is like a, a push, an electromotive force. And the ball will become positively charged until you can't get any more charge on it it'll get harder and harder to get more charge on the ball because all of this positive charge is repelling itself okay and so there'll be a limit to how much charge you can get on the ball notice i'm forget electrons i'm not bothered about electrons i'm just talking positive charge here so the power supply will push charge onto the ball now how much charge the ball can hold depends on now it'll depend on the voltage of the power supply because if we push harder we'll get more charge on and it will depend on something called the capacitance of the ball uh, and imagine like the ball is a bucket and how much water you can get in the bucket the capacitance of the ball is mainly to do with its surface area the bigger the surface area of the ball the more charge will be able to cram on it okay that's the capacitance of the ball how much charge it can hold this is how we define capacitance capacitance is defined as basically if i use a power supply a one volt power supply and i get an amount of charge q then it's how much charge you can get on the ball on the object for every voltage every potential difference of one volt between the surface of the ball and earth yeah the capacitance of the object is defined as the amount of charge it can store for every volt of potential difference between it and earth uh, capacitance is measured in farads named after michael faraday and a farad is the same as a coulomb per volt it's how much charge it can hold with a potential difference of one volt the capacitance of the ball mostly depends on the surface area of the ball but it's not just big metal balls that have capacitance everything has capacitance this young lady is storing charge when she takes her hand off the van de graaff her hair will still be stood up and then when she touches something metal she'll get an electric shock everything stores charge okay everything has some capacitance these are two metal plates uh, and you'll notice in the first diagram the switch is open again what will happen when we close the switch well what will happen will be that the power supply will push positive charge onto this plate and it will pull off positive charge of that plate so this plate will become positively charged this plate will become negatively charged until it can't take any more charge until it's full of charge for that particular voltage and two metal plates is basically the capacitors that we usually use they look like this thing here i'm sure you'll have recognized these capacitors but it's basically two bits of tin foil 
with something in between uh, and it's rolled up like a like a Swiss roll and this is our capacitor it's two metal plates and if you look at the symbol for a capacitor you'll understand now where that symbol comes from don't worry too much about the resistor we'll worry about the resistor later that represents the resistance of the circuit okay but when we close the switch what will happen will be this plate will become positively charged and this plate will become negatively charged because the power supply will push charge onto one plate and pull it off the other plate when the switch is closed. Here's a simple little question for you to have a go at and I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. So if we increase the voltage, we get more charge. OK, so this is a graph of the charge on a capacitor against the voltage across it. And it's a straight line because Q equals CV. Uh, C uh, in anything that we do is constant. So the charge will be proportional to the voltage. And I don't think you need to be a genius mathematician to work out that the gradient is equal to the capacitance. OK, so Q against V is a straight line and the gradient equals the capacitance. So uh, this is how we work out the capacitance of two metal plates. C equals epsilon A over D. Epsilon, when we did electric fields, do you remember permittivity? Permittivity is how well an electric field passes through a medium. So this is all about capacitors, isn't it? In between the plates, there's an electric field. And the more easily the electric field can pass through, the bigger the capacitance. A is the overlapping area and D is the distance between the plates. So notice the bigger the overlapping area, the more charge you can get on, the bigger the capacitance. Uh, the, the distance between the plates, if that's smaller, that will make the electric field stronger so you can get more charge on. So C is epsilon A over D. In this question, uh, we're going to use epsilon naught because there's an air gap between the plates. And you should remember that if it's if the medium is air, then we can use the permittivity of free space, epsilon naught. So have a go at this, uh, pretty straightforward. And the answer is in three, two, one, that. Now, if we don't have an air gap, we can actually make the capacitance much bigger. Uh, there is a type of capacitor called an electrolytic capacitor and an electrolytic capacitor has something called a dielectric in between the plates, which makes the capacitance much bigger. How does it do that? Well, you may need to explain this. The dielectric contains a substance which has polar molecules. Now, what's a polar molecule? A polar molecule is a molecule which has a positive end and a negative end. OK, and then what happens is that when there's an electric field between the plates, all of these molecules will line up with the electric field and that will help to pull more charge onto the plates. If you look at this side here, the negative ends of the polar molecules will pull more positive on, won't they? Uh, the positive end of the polar molecule will pull more electrons on. So in other words, it's pushing more positive off. So this helps to pull more charge onto the plates. This changes our equation a little bit. Now it's C is epsilon naught, epsilon R A over D. Epsilon naught, we know, is the permittivity of free space. Epsilon R is a property of the dielectric, and it's called the relative permittivity. And it's basically how much bigger the permittivity is compared to epsilon naught. 
I think air has a relative permittivity of about 1.001, but some materials have uh, a, a relative permittivity, which is like maybe more than a thousand, and it makes the capacitance much, much bigger. Another name for the relative permittivity is the dielectric constant. So if you see that, it's just another name for the relative permittivity. So have a go at this question here. And I will show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. OK, now capacitors store charge. They also store energy. They store electrical potential energy. Look at this circuit. When the switch is over there, the capacitor charges up. Yes, capacitor charges up. When we flick the switch over here, the capacitor will discharge. And in this case, it discharges through a bulb and the bulb flashes. So what's happening is that electrical potential energy is being transferred into heat and light energy in the bulb. So the capacitor discharges through the bulb, the bulb flashes, capacitors store energy. One of the uses of capacitors is to store energy when you need a burst of energy. For example, uh, a defibrillator, you know, you charge it up, give me a hundred joules and then OK, the inside there, there is a capacitor storing up energy, uh, a camera flash. You take a picture flash. OK, then you have to wait a few seconds for the capacitor to charge up again before you can take another picture. So capacitors store energy. How much energy do they store? Well, it's actually equal to the area under this graph. You remember our graph of Q against V, and it was this line going up here. And remember the gradient was the capacitance. Well, the area under the graph is the energy stored, the electrical potential energy. OK, so that's the energy stored is the area of that triangle. And because it's the area of the triangle, it's a half QV or a half CV squared or a half Q squared over C. I would say the most useful one is probably this one here, a half CV squared. And notice that the energy stored is proportional to the voltage squared. Why is it the, the area under the graph? I'm not going to dwell on this, but you will remember that W equals QV. Yes, energy transferred equals QV. Well, when the capacitor charges up, half of this QV is transferred into heat in the resistor and then the other half QV is stored as electrical potential energy. Read this question, have a go at it. I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. Now, how did I do it? Well, calculate the height that the mass is lifted. So I said that the energy stored by the capacitor, so a half CV squared, because that's the data that we're given, uh, goes to MGH. And we know everything in there except H, so you can work it out. Why are we unlikely to get that? It's basically the inefficiency of the motor. Electric motors typically are only about 30% efficient. So we're not going to get that much energy. Uh, why, if we double the voltage, uh, well, the height will be four times bigger. Why? Well, as I pointed out before, the energy stored is proportional to V squared. 